Hey, how you doing everyone? I know it's been a while since I've done a vlog and I do apologize for my lengthy absence. You can blame COVID for that, but I'm better now. So let's take a look at Five Nights at Freddy's based on the video game franchise of the same name. This was directed by Emma Tammy and stars Josh Hutcherson and Piper Rubio. Hutcherson plays Mike, a down on his luck security guard who has been through some shit. And he is desperately trying to hold it together so he can maintain custody of his younger sister, Abby, played by Rubio. He manages to score a night job watching over Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It's an old family restaurant that closed down years ago, but the owner wants to keep it maintained for sentimental reasons, probably. But shortly after Mike starts his new job, some weird shit starts happening with the animatronic characters in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Is it just some robots going haywire, or is something spookier going on? I am moderately familiar with the Five Nights at Freddy's video games, and I wasn't really sure how they were going to turn the story into a decent movie. And apparently the filmmakers weren't either. But I didn't really expect all that much going in, so technically I can't say I was disappointed. Hutcherson does his best in this role, but Mike is just not a very likable protagonist. The very first time we see him, he beats the ever-loving shit out of a guy who he thought was kidnapping a kid in a shopping mall, but it turns out the kid was his own son and he wasn't doing anything shady at all. So he put a guy in the hospital for no reason. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. So I can't say I feel sorry for anything bad that happens to him, but I do feel sorry for his sister Abby. Mike currently has custody of her, but he's in danger of losing it because he's really bad at life. Her aunt is trying to get custody of her, but that's no better because she is just comically evil. She would be twirling a mustache if she had one. But she's not just evil, she's also stupid. To sabotage Mike's chances of retaining custody, she hires some goons to break into Fetty Fazbear's the morning after his shift to mess up the place because somehow that is going to make him lose his job. It was not at all clear to me how that was going to work. The restaurant is closed anyway, so it's not really clear why anyone should care if someone breaks in and messes up the place. And it'd be one thing if they broke in because of his own negligence, like he forgot to lock up before he left, but I don't believe that was what happened. So as soon as the police see the obvious signs of forced entry, they're gonna know it's not his fault. How is this plan supposed to work? I hate to say it, but between fuck up Mike and the stupid ass ants, for little Abby, foster care might be a step up. And while Mike is watching over Freddy Fazbear's, he is frequently visited by police officer Vanessa, played by Elizabeth Lail. And it's really weird that this police officer has seemingly nothing better to do during her shift than to go hang out at a restaurant she used to visit when she was a kid. And she could not make it more obvious that she knows far more than she's letting on, because I know I keep saying this, but subtlety is a lost art. And I'm sure the night shift is a bit slow, but does it really afford her that much free time to be spending this much goddamn time at Freddy Fazbear's? There were times when I was honestly wondering if she was even a real cop. And the recruiter, played by Matthew Lillard, who sets Mike up with this security job, does so in the most suspicious manner possible. Again, subtlety is a lost art. And it might have been kind of fun if they were overacting on purpose. I mean, this is a very silly premise for a movie, but it didn't really feel to me like they were. The story is not very well done. There's this weird thing about Mike's brother getting kidnapped many years ago and he never saw him again, and they somehow tried to tie this into the owner of Freddy Fazbear's, and I really wasn't buying it. I didn't really buy the way the kidnapping happened in the first place either, for that matter. All of this stuff just felt really contrived and also unnecessary. They really didn't have to try to tie all this stuff together. Mike could have just been some random ass security guard who happened to get stuck guarding a haunted Chuck E. Cheese and it would have been fine. And maybe I missed something here, but there's this other character who is basically babysitting Abby while Mike is out working and she is constantly at the house and it is also made clear that she is not getting paid for any of this and it's never really made clear who the hell she is supposed to be. Is she a neighbor? Is she a friend of the family? Is she a former girlfriend of Mike's? Why is she here? I don't know, and the movie doesn't seem to know either. I will say I did like the initial interactions between Mike and Abby and the Freddy Fazbear animatronics. It did not go the way I expected it to go, but it actually kind of worked. Unfortunately, the scares were not done very well. They were just a little too goofy to be scary. And that's really the movie's biggest problem. Even if you put aside the video game adaptation aspect, just as a horror movie, it really doesn't work. 
But like I said, it met my expectations. I expected another weak-ass video game adaptation, and I got it. If you're a fan of the games, the fan service might be enough to get you through it. I still would not recommend paying full price. And if you have Peacock, you don't have to pay anything. And if you're not a fan of the games, I would say don't bother. It's not worth your time. And that's all I have to say about Five Nights at Freddy's. Till next time, take care.